So this morning, before I uh, share some thoughts with you, there's a video that I, or there's not a video, I'm sorry. We have a soundtrack and we have a, a visual. The soundtrack is done by a group called Trilogy, and they're um, three women. Uh, Laura, Belly, uh, Laura Berryhill is the vocalist. Laura Zare is the harpist, and Lori Gorin is the, is the fiddle. Lots of Lori's in this group. But then there are uh, instruments called penny whistles and low whistles. I know they're very Irish. And the uh, person who does those is um, Radom Zinkel. And uh, they perform this on their CD. Uh, the group Trilogy performs this. It's called Ready for the Storm, and I'd just like to open with this, so. Whenever you're ready, sir. <laughs> Sailing and uh, sailors is visceral to all of us because it's been around for so long. Thousands of years, you know, people have been sailing the seas and ships. And um, 
it's interesting because now I'm thinking more historically because we live in modern times and so uh, things have become so electronic now and everything that's going on. But if you think historically of uh, if you were to go into any port anywhere and you would see all the ships there, and whether they were military ships or whaling ships or cargo ships or you know merchant ships, whatever they would be, um, the people who would be milling around coming ashore and going into certain places of business would uh, have something in common, the idea that I'm a sailor and you're a sailor. And so what that meant was that a sailor was someone or is someone who has a skill set. I was looking at definitions of sailors this week, uh, not only just like um, um, dictionaries and stuff, but also metaphorically and metaphysically. And I love this definition. Um, uh, a sailor is one who managing the relationship between the vessel and the mood of the sea, having acquired the knowledge and wisdoms of navigation, maintaining the ship, and setting the riggings. I love that. The mood of the sea. And so, if you look at ships metaphorically and metaphysically too, it's interesting that the the uh, the ship is considered journey. And so, in New Thought metaphysics, we believe if so. So, you know, religion always takes on this grand question: What is the meaning of life? What is the meaning of us? And so, in metaphysics, New Thought metaphysics, we believe that the meaning of life is that life is a journey. Life is an evolutionary journey. Life is a transformational journey. And uh, we're, you know, um, if you want to, if you want to construct a heaven and hell construct, that's up to you. We don't teach that. We teach that we are travelers, universal travelers, as children of God. And what's the point of all that? The point of all that is to evolve and grow and learn and express. And the thing that we are trying to learn and express. Is our, is our birthright, that we are children of the God, we are children of the universe. And so the ship, the metaphor of the ship is that the ship is the journey. It is what we take in the journey. And, um, and so we look at uh, our life is the ship, life with a small l, and the divine life with a capital L, meaning God, is this idea that the sails are filled with the wind, the breath of life itself, with a capital L. And so, as spiritual beings, our job is to set those sails, to steer that craft, to deal with the mood of the ocean. Now, what is the mood of the ocean? What is the ocean? That is the material life that we have and the challenges that are there. And I love this song. It's one of my favorite songs because it talks about this idea that, um, you know, the lighthouse is there to, to t tell the sailor what's going on. And there is this idea that, uh, and, and there's some verbiage there that eventually the only thing the sailor has to hang on to is the sea. And that may sound like a fatalistic idea, like, well, he's in the end, the sailor's going to go down. But to hold on to the sea, what does that mean? What that means is, is that the idea of life, if we are going to get the very most out of our experiences, is to ride life. I think about bull riding. Now, I've never, I've never ridden a bull before. I'm not sure if I've ever even touched a bull but maybe not even seen a picture of one. I'm not sure. But anyway, they talk about bull riders, and they say that bull riders are able to stay on bulls by going with the motion of the bull. And what you, if you read about um, the nautical arts sailing ships, is what you have to always do is you have to go with where it's taking you. And you reset your sails. So if I were to have you close your eyes and imagine, okay, I'm going to give you the word sailor, what does that mean? You probably would come up with a certain skill set. And maybe that skill set is derived from pictures or movies or poetry that you've read. Back in the old days, they would climb up the riggings and they would set the sails. 
the captain would call out certain sets. And what that would mean is we're going to set our sails a certain way. We're going to load them up on one side of the ship or load them up on the other or reverse the sails or go with fewer sails or more sails, you know. The skill set of being able to navigate by the stars, the skill set of being able to read the currents. See, historically speaking, a sailor, just a regular what they would call a deckhand, there could be a possibility where he had to navigate the ship if something happened to the captain. Imagine that. The guy who's swabbing the deck, the guy who's painting things, the guy who's cooking, the guy who's taking care of you know, laundry or whatever, he may have to get behind that wheel and navigate that ship. It's a skill set. I love, I love the concept of skill set. You know, uh, call it psycho-spiritually. Especially the type of work I do in working with people with challenges. This idea that, I don't know how many of you have experienced this in your own life, or uh, you, maybe some of you may work with people with challenges who, you know, I've, my life, I've had both. I've had my own challenges, and I've worked with people with challenges, and because I'm a human being, and because I wake up, and sometimes, sometimes the sea is not in a good mood, and so I have those challenges, whatever it is. And so often, this idea of being right or wrong, or good or bad, which kind of comes into a lot of our verbiage, I would argue it's come down from some, some religious concepts that live with us that are unfortunate. I don't mean to hate any religion. I'm just saying there's some unfortunate, good, bad, right, wrong, good and evil, saved, unsaved, saved, lost. It's that duality thing. Skilled and unskilled. I love that. In terms of the people I, I work with, and I'll be sitting down with them, and we're talking, or we're talking in a group, and someone will start to feel pretty bad about the dirt they've done in their life, right? And that whole thing of good and bad starts creeping out. I said, no, 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 no. Skilled or unskilled. You know know what a shame buster that is? You know why that's a shame buster? Because if I'm, you know, I might be embarrassed that I'm unskilled, but guess what? I can get me some skills. Okay, then tell me what to do. I remember... I remember when I first was introduced to religious science and New Thought metaphysics, I had gone through a real turbulent time in my life that lasted from about the middle of my teens up to my early 30s. Real rough time, real dark time, really off the road. You know, I was out there, and I wasn't four-wheeling it either. I was in some little beat-up Toyota out there, you know, in the off-road somewhere. And someone who means the world to me, you know, uh, saw something in me, and we were talking, and we, our lives came together, and I was so desperately looking for a healing, and I, was, I just felt lost, and I didn't want to go back to the religions that I was um, raised in, and I'd, I'd done a lot of psychological stuff, been in counseling, and I'd made some headway there, I still, I still was challenged, and this said, This person said, Andy, I think there's this place, this place you can go to. I think you'll like what they say. The spiritual psychology of religious science. That's what it is. Our teaching is a spiritual psychology. So I went there. And, uh, and they didn't talk about me being a sinner. They didn't talk about me being lost. They didn't talk about me being bad. They talked about I was unskilled. And they had some skills for me. I love that. To navigate the waters of our life. Because the theme of this song, I am ready for the storm. Yes, sir, I am ready for the storm. That's being a sailor. Because you know what? When you're a sailor, and you're, or you make your living in the nautical world, and you're out there in the Atlantic or Pacific Ocean, and that ocean is really doing its thing, you can't just say, you know what, boys, let's just phone it in today, all right? Let's just take a day off. We'll come back tomorrow, see if it's any better. No. It's like, okay, are we ready? Are we ready? Are we going to set our sails? Are we going to take a look at our charts? Are we going to navigate our course? Are we going to see where this storm is going to take us? 
Are we going to try and get to the other side of it? It depends on our skill set. As a sailor, do you have the skill set? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm ready. I'm ready for the storm. Yes, sir. I, lo I love that. I love that certainty. It's such a metaphysical thing. That's intention. And we all know, we all know what it's like to have something come up. Uh, <clears throat> Um, you know, could, um, it, it happens, it's life, man. <laughs> Sometimes it's looking in the mirror, you know? I don't care what it is. And you go, okay, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm going to, I got to do something with these sales. I got to do something with what I have. Now, where I work, I, I you know, I do groups. I do one-on-one -on -one counseling, but I do groups, and I do a lot of groups every week. So I got my got my group I'm working with, and we got a thing. We're kind of making our way through. And uh, this one night, um, uh, we were talking about something, and uh, I have a, a person in my group who's a, a compulsive note taker. She just is taking notes all the time, and she'll have me repeat words and stuff. And you know, it's cool. That's that's her way of being, right? And so we we're talking about something. I said, Andy, Andy, I got a question for you. And I said, well, what's that? What's a meta, I, let me, she's trying to pick out her hand right, meta, what, physician? It isn't metaphysician, what's that? I said, where'd you get that from? She said, you said it about two weeks ago. <laughs> I said, why did I say that? <laughs> and so, um, so someone who was also in the group, he remembered, he said, well, we asked you what religion you were. Because this one time we were talking about the power of spirituality and recovery, you know, and the power of turning our lives over to higher powers and all that kind of stuff, right? And it's, it's, it's wide open. You know, where I work, we work with evidence-based material. We're not faith-based. We're not 12-step based, evidence-based, client-centric, right? And so we talk about spirituality in its broadest terms. And someone that night said, what religion are you? I said, well, I'm a metaphysician. And they didn't, they didn't even have a follow-up. They never heard that. And so I, I didn't, I just went on. You know? So anyway, um, so she said, what's a, what's a metaphysician? And see, this is interesting. So what I want to do, I want to take a moment. And I, I don't know, you know, you guys, you guys are here. I assume you're into this philosophy. What do you call yourselves? Do you call yourself a metaphysician? Is that old school? What do you do? You call yourself what? A spiritual person, a believer, a healer? A, what do you call yourself? Spiritual person. Yeah. Okay. What's the skill set for that? Okay. Divine right. I love that. What's so? Does that does that affect how you set your sails? Okay. Uh, divine right living. Have you ever thought about, is there any others? Because I, you know, I, I do, I call myself a metaphysician. I've been, I've been doing this stuff for about 30 years, and so maybe that's kind of old school. That's what you call yourself? Okay. Yeah, but you can use it. Do you, do you have a tattoo or anything that says that? <laughs> okay. So... Okay. So let me ask you a question. What's your skill set? Or, or, okay. Okay. Is there anything, for, for any of you guys, is there anything you turn to? The, the seas are getting kind of rough. Somebody just passed away. Okay, compassion. Who said that? Okay. And, 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 and tell me how that, How's that a skill set that you use in, in anything? Okay. Okay. Understand what? Okay. Oh, I love that. And, and why? Why is that important? Okay. So she said, I, I have compa compassion. This, so I'll tell you how I heard it in my mind. Compassion opens up the space 
for me to look at what's really going on so I know how to show up there. Love that. That's like in the song. The last thing you grab a hold of is the sea. The sea will tell you what to do. The sea will tell you how to set your sails and how, to, how, you, do, how you do your rigging. So the idea of, you know, and when I, when I got involved in religious science and, and new thought, uh, I found out that they were class-centric, right? Everything was about classes and seminars and workshops and all that stuff. And I mean, I, I showed up on a Sunday and within Tuesday, I was in three classes, you know. <laughs> and I, you know, I've been taking classes off and on for 30 years. And as a lot of them have been within this uh, teaching, but a lot of them, I've taken stuff outside. I've, I've gone and I've re I read all kinds of books. You know, I've always got, like probably a lot of you, we, you know, we, we tend to be compulsive book readers, those of us, right? Barnes & Noble, they love seeing us walk in, you know. Or the Barn, well now it's the Barnes & Noble website. They love to see your little click, right? And so, and so they queue up all their self-help and all their books and all their spirituality, right? Because um, this is the deal. When I walked into religious science for the first time was, uh, don't have a savior for you, dude. You know, the cavalry, they ain't coming. It's you. You and God. And your community. And uh, in order to move forward in what you want to do, you're going to have to become the sailor and to weather the storms. And I, I love this idea that was brought forward because to me it's, um, I found it to be one of the most challenging, the idea of compassion because that's hard sometimes. But yet it opens up the space for, to go where we need to go. To be the sailor. So I looked up metaphysician with a couple old school guys. One of them is uh, Charles Fillmore with Unity. And Charles Fillmore says of the metaphysician, uh, one skilled in the sp spiritual science of being, which means God, a perpetual student of the laws of spirit and God, a perpetual student, a perpetual student. You know, every day that sailor wakes up on that ship, he is, or he or she is going to get a lesson that day, every single day. To be open and to be curious, to be a student. And Ernest Holmes says, a metaphysician is conscious of spiritual law and its relationship to creation and healing. Our, our relationship to healing because that's really what it all is. Um, last week, and I'm going to end with this, um, uh, Vicki Lopes uh, was practicing last week, and I was here, and she did the meditation, and I ripped her off on this, so I want to give her credit. Uh, within her meditation, there's a quote from Eleanor Roosevelt who said, It is not enough to talk about peace. One must believe it. And it isn't enough to believe it. One must have to work at it. Our teaching is a teaching of doing the work. The sails ain't going to set themselves. The rigging, the course, the navigation, none of it's going to do itself. We have to do the work. And that's what I love about so much about this philosophy. So thank you very much. All right. Um, Okay. So, um, it is my pleasure to have Don come on up and give us his second piece. Don? I think I have another bite of my pear. 